My name is Eugenia Lean, and I teach uh, Chinese history here at Columbia University. And I also happen to be the director of the Weatherhead East Asian Institute. The Weatherhead was established in 1949, and it's been Columbia University's center for research, education, publications, events, uh, all related to modern and contemporary East and Southeast Asia. Um, so I do want to give a little plug to the Weatherhead. If you want to find out about our events, please do take a look at our website, which is weai.columbia.edu. This evening, I'm actually very, very pleased to um, introduce what is actually one of our uh, most exciting events each academic year. Uh, we hold each year the N.T. Wong Distinguished Lecture. We've done this for nine years. Weatherhead uh, has sponsored this lecture alongside with the Jerome Chazen Institute for Global Business at the Columbia Business School. And I understand this year, too, that we, well, we are co-sponsoring uh, not just with Chazen, but also the Paul Milstein Center for Real Estate at the Columbia Business School. Uh, this lecture series commemorates N.T. Wang, the late Dr. N.T. Wang. He served as the director of the China International Business Project at Columbia. Uh, Dr. Wang uh, was a, uh, a wonderful, gracious gentleman uh, who was also uh, extremely knowledgeable uh, and fully grasped the potential of China's economy. And he worked uh, arduously to promote uh, better understanding of developments in Chinese international business relations. Uh, indeed, some of that might be relevant for our moment, uh, our contemporary moment today. In any case, it's an honor to his legacy that the N.T. Wang Distinguished Lecture continues to provide internationally renowned experts on the Chinese economy with the opportunity to share their work with the, China, the Columbia community. Uh, I'm happy to now invite uh, Professor Neng Wang, who is the uh, Chun Kun Lin Professor of Real Estate and Professor of Finance at the Columbia Business School. He will be introducing this year's speaker, uh, Professor Wei Xiong, uh, who is the Trumbull Adams Professor of Finance and the Professor of Economics at the Department of Economics and Bentheim Center for Finance at Princeton University. Um. Before I introduce uh, Professor Wei Xiong, I guess I'm supposed to mention, is this a joint event with Chasing uh, Institute and uh, Paul Milstein Center for Real Estate? So just want to mention that. Um, <clears throat> it uh, truly gives me a great, great pleasure to introduce Professor Wei Xiong uh, from Princeton University. Uh, I have known Wei for 18 years. Uh, I was a graduating doctoral student at Stanford when Wei visited uh, Stanford Business School and gave his, uh, uh, one of his papers, um, which happened to be co-authored with Jose Shankman, who is now actually on the faculty here in our economics department. Um, at that moment, um, observing from far distance, sitting at the back, I knew Wei was going to be a superstar. And, uh, and that paper turned out to be uh, one of the most influential papers, I would say, in finance theory. It's titled something like Overconfidence and the Speculative Bubbles, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and uh, since then, uh, Wei and I have stayed uh, in touch. Wei is a very prolific, creative, and uh, broad scholar. Um, he's written very widely on asset, mar uh, asset markets, mm -hmm. Chinese financial systems, as you will see today, uh, behavioral finance, and uh, capital market imperfections, among, well, and <coughs> uh, among various other subjects. Um, Wei and I um, have had uh, numerous occasions, actually, over the last few years to, to um, uh, exchange certain ideas at uh, you know various uh, occasions, including certain think tanks, and he always strikes me as somebody who is deeply intellectually curious with very profound insights. You know, he's really you know done work, including theoretical, um, applied, and empirical work across the board. 
Now, without further ado, uh, actually, before I do that, let me uh, tell you a little bit about his own, uh, his own uh, uh, um, academic career. He, uh, he was a prodigy child when he was uh, 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 in China. I think he went to college when he was 14. And, and then he, uh, f uh, after his college, he came to Columbia. So he's actually a Columbia alum, I should mention that. He did, uh, I guess, two years in our physics department. Then he became interested in finance and economics. Uh, after getting his PhD, he went to uh, um, Princeton, and he's been there ever since. Mm -hmm. Without further ado, let's uh, welcome Professor Wei Shang. Uh, thanks, uh, Annem, for uh, the warm uh, introduction. Uh, it's my great pleasure, actually, to uh, come to give this uh, NT1 uh, lecture. Um, as uh, Nen mentioned, uh, actually, I'm a, Prince, uh, I'm a, a Columbia uh, uh, numbness, so uh, Prince, uh, Columbia actually is the place, actually, uh, my first stop in the U.S., right? And uh, before Columbia, I actually knew nothing about the finance, neither uh, <laughs> about the uh, economics. So, so it's really here uh, I started to 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 hear anything so at all actually about the financial market, and there I mean eventually sort of uh, I, I figured out so there's this wonderful world out there <laughs> besides the physics and the math actually sort of uh, 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 is actually equally or even more interesting, right? So so so. That's why I, I eventually uh, uh, transferred uh, uh, from uh, uh, physics uh, to finance. And uh, I, I, I did my, my study at Duke, not, not, not necessarily at Columbia, but, uh, but I thought that the experience uh, here uh, in the two years was, uh, was truly uh, 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 memorable, uh, even now. Um, <clears throat> so uh, today I want to uh, use this uh, uh, opportunity to say something about uh, uh, China's real estate boom. I suppose uh, uh, this is a topic uh, uh, not only uh, relevant to uh, people in China, but uh, 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 potentially relevant actually for the for the for the whole world. Um, um, this boom, as I will mention, actually the real estate market is actually. Uh, Speaking from an uh, 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 economist, uh, the real estate the market in China is actually not just necessarily about a bunch of housing, right? Actually, uh, this is sort of a, a probably the most important part of China's financial system, as well as the economy, right? So, so the concern uh, about uh, 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 this, uh, this real estate boom actually uh, is quite uh, uh, wide uh, spread, right? So, um, uh, Given that uh, you sh show up, uh, presumably uh, you, you, you you already uh, know something about uh, uh, what's happening uh, in China's real estate market, right? And in fact, actually, uh, uh, the boom, uh, together with the the the, the rapidly rising leverage uh, in China uh, in the last few years, right, often actually. Uh, 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 lead to the, the kind of discussion about whether this is sort of the, 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 the second uh, bubble uh, after uh, US uh, in 2006, right? right? So, so, so here, uh, hopefully, uh, I, I will use this to share some uh, uh, of my uh, uh, understanding uh, uh, about uh, uh, this real estate boom. Um, let, let, let me make sort of uh, uh, this a little bit clearer before we get into sort of the, the details. So, so despite the fact uh, at the sort of a very high level, uh, housing prices across China have been rising very rapidly. I will show you some figures later. So, so, so the magnitude is truly impressive and spectacular. Uh, and also leverage uh, in China also have been rising. So today I'm not going to uh, get too much into leverage, even though that's also a very big part of this. Uh, these sort of two observations at the sort of very high level uh, look very much similar to what happened in the US uh, in 2006, right? But actually underneath it, actually, uh, the mechanisms actually are very, very different. 
And for that reason, uh, the concerns, uh, uh, you know, about the potential sort of a, a financial uh, a crisis and all that actually uh, probably less likely. Okay, not not impossible, but but the, but the, the kind of sort of a, a U.S. kind of a, a, a style crisis, right? Financial crisis, say, you know, Lehman failure and then the whole financial system meltdown kind of situation uh, is uh, less likely. But on the other hand, we do concern about the many other things. You know, the 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 to the extent uh, we have uh, very high prices uh, uh, in the real estate market across the country and also leverage have been so high. I mean, they're, they're worrying in many ways, but not necessarily sort of in the sense of worrying about uh, a potential financial crisis, rather about the sort of uh, uh, will this help China or, or, or uh, the, 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 these observations or these factors eventually going to kind of eventually slow down uh, uh, the economy going forward. So I think sort of the, the, the concern about growth is perhaps sort of more uh, relevant than necessary about the financial crisis because sort of the structure of the economy and because of uh, uh, how uh, uh, real estate is sort of uh, uh, managed uh, uh, in China. Okay, so, so sort of if you sort of want a, 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 a kind of take home point, that's sort of the point. All right, so, <clears throat> um, so given the concern, sort of, uh, yeah, so, <clears throat> Uh, let me come back to the real estate boom here. So, so there have been a lot of concerns. So, and uh, I, I don't have to say too much about the sort of the, the importance of real estate in the Chinese economy. So, in China, housing holdings are the biggest component uh, in household asset portfolio, right? So, if you look at the uh, households, so so housing is by far the most important part. So, not the stock market. It has been very lively, but you know, so so it's the, the, the how much actually it contributes to, to people's wealth actually is not that big, right? Right. So so really, it's, it's housing is the biggest part, even bigger than uh, bank deposit, right? Okay. Um, Another uh, very important part of housing or real estate is that uh, uh, re uh, local governments actually heavily rely on uh, uh, land sales uh, 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 for, 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 for their uh, 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 budget, okay, for their physical budget. And this actually is a very important part, actually probably the most important part about the real estate market in China. So we should understand, so the supply eventually controlled by local government because uh, uh, land uh, by constitution is still owned by the state, right? And the local governments uh, are the de facto, uh, uh, have de facto control of land supply, okay? So, and uh, at the same time, local governments actually rely on uh, selling land to fund uh, their physical budget, right? So, so this basically means that there's a monopoly uh, uh, in the land market and the essentially uh, uh, the, the real estate market, okay? So with this in mind, so then you would understand the sort of how, how why would the price uh, stay very high and actually uh, quite consistently high, right? So, so with all this, because <laughs> <laughs> There's a very powerful hand behind all of this, right? So, so for good or for bad, so so reasons. So, so so th th this is sort of, a, and actually also for this reason. So all this concern about uh, uh, leverage in China, right? So leverage again is also related to local government, and in fact related to local government use land and the land sales as collateral to borrow from banks to fund uh, local uh, investment uh, 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 projects. So so with all that, actually uh, even the leverage problem is connected the real estate, uh, but through actually uh, uh, the financing of local government rather than uh, uh, the financing of household. In the U.S. Uh, experience, we know sort of what happened uh, in the U.S. Uh, in 2006 is about the household borrowed too much using housing, right? Especially uh, subprime households, right? But but in China, it's totally different. Okay, we worry about uh, uh, leverage, but leverage is not really taken by households. So, so most debt actually, especially sort of the, 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 the recent growth in leverage uh, 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 was mostly driven by, by local government or, or, or firms uh, around the local governments. Okay, so, so, so this, this has very different uh, implication, different nature, right? So, so, uh, uh, so, so for that reason, we really need to sort of, this is a very important part in terms of understanding all of this, okay? And uh, real estate assets are also uh, widely used as collateral for firms to borrow from banks from uh, 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 the capital market. So, so for that reason, real estate assets also are very relevant to firms as well. 
Okay, and finally, uh, I will mention a bit later about uh, uh, banks are also uh, heavily exposed to real estate risk, right? Because banks eventually provided uh, a lot of loans uh, to some to household. Household is not the most uh, important part here, but 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 to 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 local government and the two firms, right? So so related to the real estate, right? So for this reason together, that's why sort of you can see uh, 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 real estate is a very important part. If you worry about the financial stability in China, of course you, you need to worry about the real estate. <clears throat> but on the other hand, because real estate, all this trouble is eventually kind of go back to local government, right? And to the extent we, we understand, uh, uh, you know, government uh, in China is so powerful, right? So, so to the extent that we, we don't worry about the sort of uh, uh, bankruptcy of a government uh, system, so then uh, perhaps uh, uh, we shouldn't worry about too much about the sort of uh, real estate meltdown, okay? So, so, so be clear, <laughs> a meltdown is, is uh, unlikely for this reason. That doesn't say it will continue to rise, or that, this doesn't say there's no trouble, right? So it's just kind of other kind of trouble, all right? So uh, uh, <clears throat> this sort of a, a very brief uh, introduction. So, so the plan today, uh, I will uh, first uh, First, the talk actually uh, uh, mostly built on uh, a recent handbook chapter I wrote with uh, 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 Liu, so on China's real estate market. You can find the, the chapter on my website. Uh, so first, uh, I will give a, a very brief uh, uh, history of China's real estate market. Then I will mention some real estate indices to show you sort of the, the magnitude of that real estate boom. And then follow that, I will sort of uh, relate the real estate to different parts of the, the economy, to households, to local government, to firms, and to banks. So that, that's sort of the rough plan. <coughs> All right, so first, uh, a, a brief history. Um, some of you know that actually housing market is relatively new in China. Right. So before 90s, uh, all the urban residents actually uh, uh, lived uh, uh, with sort of state-owned enterprises, right? Because the whole society organized around these state-owned enterprises, right? People uh, work and live all within these enterprises. So until uh, uh, late 90s, as part of the uh, SOE reform, so so eventually government. Uh, 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 started to um, uh, want to develop a separate real estate market so that uh, uh, people buy their own residence, right, rather than uh, assign the residence by, by, by the, by the uh, uh, enterprise. So uh, the, the central government actually uh, carried out the various reforms to facilitate uh, uh, the development of the, the real estate market, uh, including uh, legalizing property rights for housing. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, um, Land is still uh, owned by, by the state, right? But on the other hand, uh, at least uh, uh, the, the buildings on top of land can be privately owned. So this is sort of this, this uh, uh, institutionally, uh, uh, there's a legal reform to make this possible. Um, and also, uh, the central government abolished the uh, housing allocation as in-kind benefit uh, for working for state-owned enterprises, right? Before that, uh, 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 housing allocation basically is a part of your work and all that. So, so now, uh, 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 the enterprises no longer give out uh, housing, so you have to go out to buy your own housing, right? So, so this, 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 this uh, led to uh, demand. And also, uh, the central bank, People's Bank of China, outlined the procedure for residential mortgage loans uh, that subsidized the interest rate in uh, 1998. So this is also a way to, right? So most people cannot really afford to buy in housing. So, so the uh, mortgage market, the mortgage loans are, are very uh, necessary, right? So now uh, we know China actually has a huge uh, mortgage market, uh, 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 the, 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 the second uh, uh, in the world. <clears throat> All right, so before I get into sort of uh, uh, some discussion about different cities, it's useful to keep in mind uh, 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 often people in China uh, uh, categorize uh, cities in uh, tiers, right? So the first tier, so basically means uh, the four largest cities, Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou, and Shenzhen. And then the second tier, so basically these are 30 some uh, uh, large cities, uh, ca uh, 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 provincial capitals or, 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 or other sort of vital industrial and the commercial centers. And also their so-called third tier and the fourth tier and so on, the, the smaller cities, okay? 
So to talk about uh, uh, the real estate market, it's uh, uh, important to first recognize uh, we had a, a massive uh, urbanization process in China over the last uh, 30 years and so, right? So, so here is a, a plot. You can quickly see sort of this process in some sense. So people migrating from uh, uh, countryside into cities, and people uh, in small cities get into larger cities, and so on. So, so for the four largest cities, the so-called tier one city here, you can see that the population has been rising uh, uh, very rapidly uh, from early 2000 to uh, 2012, just a short period of 10 years, you can see already huge growth, right? So from 45 million to, to over 65 million just in the sort of a 10 year period. So this is for the largest uh, for cities. And the second tier city also had sizable growth, okay? But, but the third tier city is pretty much kind of flat. So, so this sort of, uh, you can see sort of the process, really. So, so people are pouring into sort of the large cities. <clears throat> and uh, behind the sort of this uh, uh, urbanization process, um, we, we have the sort of the construction boom across uh, sort of different cities, right? So here, so, so I use a quick figure to show you that. So the solid line here is the uh, supply of new homes in the first tier cities, these four largest cities. So, so I, I mean, this plot didn't go far back. Uh, uh, this actually started uh, in the 90s, okay? Especially in the, you know, the, the, the real estate development started in the four largest cities, right? Eventually sort of uh, spread across uh, uh, a second tier and third tier. So here, uh, uh, the first tier already started uh, before this, and they actually already peaked in 2005. Okay, so because you know limited uh, uh, land available in these larger cities, so supply eventually kind of uh, 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 coming down. But on the other hand, the second tier and the third tier cities picked up. Okay, so this sort of uh, 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 this roughly sort of the the, the, the development uh, process, and. Uh, um, in this uh, 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 real estate boom, often people talk about uh, 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 ghost, ghost city, right? Meaning sort of uh, uh, some city actually have very high vacancy rate and so on. So, so here is a figure I took from a recent JEP uh, study. So, so, so you can see that, uh, you know, overall, you know, the vacancy rate is high. Right, so so roughly uh, all these years across different tier of cities, uh, about six, eight percent, roughly, and especially uh, in some first tier cities, uh, in recent years, uh, the vacancy rate uh, uh, hiked to over eighteen percent. Right, so people often worry about this high vacancy rate, you know, suggesting sort of uh, uh, too many empty houses or something. <laughs> so, so I mean, this is indeed a concern. But on the other hand, recognizing, especially in the first tier cities, you don't really need to worry because of this migration process, right? This urban people are from smaller city or piled into a, a large city. And in fact, actually, this process is still ongoing. So in that sense, actually, this worry about the sort of the the, the, the ghost city or vacant uh, units in the in the in the large cities actually are kind of a, uh, less a concern to me. But on the other hand, actually, I would more worry about the th fourth tier, third third tier, and the fourth tiers because because from the last figure I showed you, um, you know, the population is mostly flat in these cities. In fact, actually, I think this population number are kind of official number. I think uh, and then. The, the probably more accurate number we say the third tier and fourth tier, uh, uh, fourth tier cities actual population is going down, right? Because the people are really going to to the first tier and second tier, these largest cities, right? So, but on the other hand, uh, the supply in these cities have been rising anyway and uh, very rapidly because uh, 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 for the reason I will mention later. So, uh, um, the local government has a huge incentive to to develop real estate and use that as funding to fund the uh, local other investment and so on. So, so this uh, uh, strong temptation to do that so so but <clears throat> uh, uh, anyway so <clears throat> uh, this is a uh, uh, you know and also keep in mind that uh, you know the, the vacant unit in some sense is unavoidable because uh, 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 in the development process of these uh, cities, even though these cities all existed before, uh, most of them, right? But nevertheless, uh, uh, 30 years ago, you know, the housing are all crappy, right? So the towns are all crappy. So, so really to, 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 to uh, 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 redevelop a new s uh, a city, the best way actually is to open basically a new area, right? So, so and build all new things from the ground. And, and there's a whole process to do that. That may take a long time, right? So after you finish all these uh, 
uh, a brand new communities without nobody, uh, anybody in it yet. It will take years for people to gradually uh, move in and so on. So, so I think there's a natural process. So, so, so in that sense, sort of these vacancy rates, uh, to some extent, I expect it. But, uh, but of course, uh, uh, there are sort of uh, uh, cities, and there are actually very good examples out there indeed, even after 10 years, some of the, the, the sort of new developments are still empty. That, that is worrying, right? All right. So, uh, so this is my quick uh, mention of sort of the, the, the development process. Uh, really, to get into the heart of the boom, we need to know sort of how much prices have been rising and so on, right? So because prices are, are indeed uh, are very useful indicators of the, uh, uh, the, the strength of the, uh, the market and, and the boom, right? Right? So let me mention sort of the, the, the housing uh, indices. So the, for this, we need to uh, 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 talk about uh, both housing price indices as, as well as land price indices and so on. So uh, some of you probably know that actually housing index is actually more complicated uh, than sort of a usual sort of a stock price, right? So stock price, you know, they're, they're constantly traded in the stock exchange. So you just take a look, compare today's price with yesterday's price, you, you, you immediately know how much you've been rising, right? So, so housing is a bit more complicated because houses uh, 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 sold today may not be the same as houses sold yesterday or, or last year and so on, so because they may not be sort of the same, same, same kind of housing, right? So, so then uh, 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 it's important actually to compare sort of apple with apple rather than apple with uh, banana sold yesterday, then you know, they're not comparable. So, so this, this, this causes some trouble, uh, uh, you know, makes this not so easy actually to see how much uh, housing prices have been uh, 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 changing, right? So um, economists have developed a various approach to, to really construct a sort of a, uh, uh, quality controlled uh, indices uh, to make, uh, 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 to, 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 to directly measure uh, uh, fluctuation in uh, 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 housing prices. Um, one is so-called hedonic price regressions, basically requests uh, uh, housing prices for different uh, tra traded units onto their sort of measurable characteristics, which are supposed to measure uh, 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 quality of uh, uh, these different units, right? So, so I mean, the trouble is that this approach is very hard to implement because uh, with the rapid expansion of Chinese cities in the last 10, 15 years, right? So how do you measure quality? How do you measure these characteristics? The characteristic change, right? Because city boundary have been moving outside, right? Somewhere used to be at the center, now no longer, right? Or some, somewhere uh, used to be very remote in people's mind, but with the, you know, the subway and the, sort of the new highway. So then they are actually very easy and very convenient, right? So all this constant train changing. So this, this makes it very hard to measure characteristics, right? And another approach uh, 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 economists uh, often use so-called the repeated sales approach, so popularized by uh, this uh, Yale economist Bob Schiller, right? So some people you know, a uh, case Schiller index, indices for US uh, housing prices, right? So the basic idea is that uh, we compare sort of a house price change for the same units. Same units sold last year versus this year, right? How much price changed, right? So that provides a, a direct way to, 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 to measure uh, 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 housing price change without worrying about quality, right? Because it's the same unit. Right. So uh, this approach is not the uh, uh, idea either because uh, for China, uh, uh, the whole uh, real estate market is new, right? So, so basically, uh, it's very hard to find the repeated sales, right? Most of the transactions are new homes, right? So, so they sold, uh, you, you, you buy these homes from the developer and you probably hold it for a while before you sell it again, right? So we, we don't see sort of that many uh, repeated sales either. So, so this is sort of the, the trouble. So a few years back, uh, I, I, I worked with uh, uh, some, uh, several friends, Hamin Fang at uh, Penn. University of Pennsylvania and uh, Zoria and uh, uh, Peking University, we developed a sort of a, a hybrid approach uh, uh, for, for this kind of uh, uh, Chinese uh, style uh, housing uh, development. Because uh, uh, usually a city uh, will have many new communities being built, right? So, so, so uh, uh, homes are all from these uh, new communities. And it usually takes uh, uh, two years, three years for each community to sell different units, uh, 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 right? So this is a, a community A, this is community B, community C, to the extent that it takes sort of a, a period of time 
uh, uh, for, for the developer to sell different units. So some sold the last year, some sold this year within the same community. So these units are very similar, right? They're not exactly the same, but most of the characteristic or quality, they're similar, right? The transportation, the neighborhood, uh, 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 whether it's close to the city center and so on, they're, they're very similar, right? So, so then this allows us to control many of these uh, difficult measure kind of uh, uh, qualities. So, so we use this sort of uh, uh, to construct the sort of, in some sense, this is repeated cells within the community, right? So, 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 so this allows us to uh, construct a, uh, uh, a set of uh, uh, price indices for uh, uh, different uh, uh, cities, 120 cities in China. Uh, let me skip the data stuff so, uh, and show you a few indices. And I also will mention why we have to do this. Uh, in fact, actually, uh, the National Bureau of Statistics uh, uh, does uh, publish sort of a, a set of indices for seven, 70 largest cities, right? But, but actually, <laughs> I, I will show you, actually, our indices actually look very different from theirs, okay? So, so here is, uh, my, my data actually is limited. So unfortunately, this is a downside. Uh, we managed to get a very nice data set from one of the largest uh, uh, banks in China for 10 year period between 2003 uh, to 2013. So we get sort of all the mortgage loans uh, 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 granted by this bank. This is a very large bank. Um, and and uh, because uh, when you make a loan, you you naturally know sort of the the transaction price for different units uh, uh, that underlies the loans. So so from that we can construct this index. Uh, so this is our index between 2003 and the 2013. Okay. So for Beijing, so this is Shanghai, this is Guangzhou, this is Shenzhen. So these are the four largest cities, the so-called the tier one city uh, in China. So, so you can see Beijing. So from 2003 to 2013, price went up from uh, 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 initial level of one to almost eight, okay? So, so this is enormous growth in the 10 year period from one to eight, right? So, 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 so I should mention this, uh, this, uh, this uh, uh, purple, uh, this red line here, so this is the MBS, the National Statistics, uh, this official price index for Shanghai, published by, by, by MBS. So, so according to this, it grew from 1 to 1.5, basically, right? So amazingly different. I don't know how, they, how did they construct it. If you read the manual, actually, it's basically roughly look like the same way we did it. But, but somehow, the outcome is very, very different, right? So, so for, for Shanghai, our index grew from 1 to about 4. So again, MBS uh, it's, it's flat, looks flat to me, right? So, so Guangzhou from one to uh, almost five, Shenzhen from one to about four, okay, in this period. Okay, unfortunately, we, we lost the, the, the data access after we published this because the bank was a little bit worried, <laughs> so, given that our index looks so different. So, so we, we, we was not able to, uh, we, 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 we are not able to sort of, uh, to, 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 to update this. But nevertheless, actually, interestingly, uh, 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 now actually going back, uh, uh, you know, now it's like a f uh, 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 five, six years after uh, uh, we, you know our our, our, our index ended. Um, we look back to actually MBS index. Amazingly, MBS index improved. <laughs> so, so, so here, here is a set of plot uh, uh, for before uh, 2013. So this is our index. Uh, index constructed from the bank loan data uh, we had access to. So for this after 2013, so this part. Okay, so so we connected this with the MBS uh, index. Okay, this actually MBS index looks pretty reasonable now, right? Previously barely moved, but now actually after 2013 somehow uh, it, it looks actually fluctuates like reasonable index you would imagine, right? So so this is for Beijing and this is for Shanghai. This is actually for Shenzhen. Actually, I'm amazed. We know sort of Shenzhen actually uh, uh, in 2017 had this uh, very dramatic boom, right? Actually, you even see this in the MBS data. So, so our data, uh, I, my data doesn't cover it, but now there's actually also shows up in the official data. I think sort of the MBS probably realized if you continue to publish this totally uninformed data, <laughs> more, 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 more index like uh, what we did actually will show up anyway, right? So I decided to be more informative about it. So, so now actually I can just uh, piece together sort of uh, 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 the index I had with my friends together with the MBS data we can piece together. Okay, so, so this is sort of the 
full picture. Uh, you can see that uh, uh, from 2003 to 2017, this is where this plot ended. So, so we, we see Beijing uh, price went up from a level of one to about the 11, okay? Right, so this is a, a spectacular uh, price appreciation, right? For for a period that roughly 15 years, right, right, and Shanghai from level one to over six, okay, uh, Guangzhou from one to eight, Shenzhen from one to, is that nine? Oh, uh, uh, about eight, one to eight, okay. Right, so so I think, uh, uh, in some sense, uh, this price appreciation is much bigger than what we have seen in the U.S. Right, so even uh, uh, standing in 2006, even the most rapid growth, uh, say in California or in in in, in Florida, uh, is is uh, far from this. Right, okay, and. Uh, this is the largest city. I should also mention, and most people still live in smaller cities, right? So this is the second tier city, this third tier city, okay? So even in the, uh, these smaller cities, we nevertheless have seen uh, tremendous uh, price appreciation. Uh, the second tier city, they're about the 35 uh, second tier cities uh, from level of one to six, okay? So pretty uh, uh, large. Uh, third tier cities, so there are about uh, uh, 80 some cities in our sample, third tier cities, from level one to also over three, okay? So, so, so very uh, uh, dramatic price appreciation. But in terms of uh, uh, how should we, you know, think about this price appreciation, right? Is this too big, right? Or, or this is more reasonable? How, how do we sort of uh, uh, use the right benchmark? If we compare this to US, of course, everything looks so big, but, but but is this really too big? So we need to have sort of a, some benchmark, right? So think about housing. I mean, it's complicated. We need to think about supply. We need to think about demand. If we think about household demand, of course, uh, uh, what's the right benchmark for demand is income, right? So how about people's uh, 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 demand increasing? Usually we think it, it should increase with uh, wealth, right, or income. So, so, so the red line here is the so-called per capita uh, GRP, gross regional growth. Roughly speaking, so per capita GDP. Uh, for, for people in the city, okay? So, so you can see that actually, look at the second tier cities, right? So, you know, we know China has a, a tremendous uh, economic growth uh, in this period, right? So roughly 10% a year until very recently it slowed down. So, so and the per capita GRP uh, basically reflects that, right? It has also uh, grown a lot, right? So for the second tier cities, from level of one to four or five, Right, and uh, for third-tier cities, actually the per capita GRP outgrow uh, 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 the the housing price. Okay, so in that sense, sort of, uh, uh, if you think about this way, uh, despite the tremendous growth, uh, this growth is not without uh, any support. Right, there is support. Right, okay, except for the 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 the, the first-tier cities. So so the red line here is the per capita GRP. So the Clearly, housing price uh, 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 grew a lot more than uh, the, 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 the GRP growth, okay? So, so, so this sort of uh, the rough picture, right? So, so how, how, how the prices have been rising, right? Price did uh, grow a lot. But at the same time, in most cities, uh, um, uh, uh, the second tier and third tier cities, uh, the, the tremendous housing price appreciation is not without any support, okay? So because uh, uh, we had also seen tremendous economic growth. But of course, uh, uh, there's a natural question. If we look at the sort of uh, uh, the, the national average, if we sort of average out the, all the uh, uh, cities, right? So this red line here, oh, sorry, the, the, the blue line here is the, uh, the price uh, uh, index uh, from 2003 to 2014. I forgot to update this uh, for the recent years, but they're, they're roughly the same, okay? And the red line here is per capita GDP, uh, GRP. And the, the, the yellow line here is the per capita disposable income. So they're, they're pretty much actually kind of matched in a way, right? Okay? So in some sense, actually, this, this is, so, so this at the, the sort of very kind of aggregated uh, sense, uh, uh, the, the price appreciation is very much matched with uh, 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 income growth in a sense, right? right? So maybe uh, match too well, right? Um, um, there, there's a natural question we, we can come back. In the U.S., 
even though U.S. never had sort of such a tremendous income growth or economic growth uh, in the last 100 years, but uh, you know, you also had uh, reasonable growth, right? Right, so two percent a year on average over uh, 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 last uh, uh, two hundred years, right? But did the housing price grow two percent a year on average? Or we know it's no, right? So, so Bob Schiller had this uh, very famous observation: housing price in the U.S. over last uh, one hundred years is zero, right? <laughs> right. So, so because supply is tremendous, whenever so the demand go up, there will be a lot of supply, right? So, make sure price uh, over long scale is basically flat, right? Right. But in China, sort of, uh, uh, when income grow, actually housing price grew with it, right? Right. So, so it's kind of amazing why, 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 why would the uh, price grow so well with the income? That that actually uh, reflects the supply side, right? Right. So only when supply is uh, well managed, right? So, so price will rise with uh, demand, right? Does that make sense? Right. So, so. So who manages the supply, right? It's the government, right? So in a sense, sort of this reflects uh, a nice job uh, did by, uh, done by the government over the uh, uh, sort of a, a very aggregated sense, right? So, so we will come back to this a little bit later, okay? <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> I meant to actually show a little bit of sort of uh, 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 this figure, compare this with other countries. So we know many countries had sort of a dramatic price boom and the bust and, uh, and, uh, and the leads to a lot of worry, right? So Japan is a very good example, right? We know uh, Japanese e economy basically, uh, 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 we had the so-called the lost two decades or three decades uh, uh, because after the, the housing bust, right? So, so this is the, 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 you know, this is a very rough uh, measure of land price in Japan. So it went up so much, uh, peaked in early 90s, right? So then in the last uh, 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 30 years, so I've been falling back, right? right? So, so, so if we plot the per capita GDP in Japan, so you can see from 50s to now, so, right? so, so clearly uh, land price outgrew uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the economy. Right, and and then this is the bust, right? So so this comparison is pretty sharp, right? Right. So so I mean, so far China doesn't look like like yet, even though the, the we we are looking at a very short period, right? Only 15 years so far. But Japan, this is almost uh, 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 60 some years, right? Okay. So, so there's another sort of this plot is Singapore. Okay, Singapore also from time to time we worry about the uh, uh, real estate market in Singapore, right? So if we again look at these two variables, so this is a, a very rough measure uh, uh, housing price index uh, in Singapore, and this is the oh only seven, all right. So, so the, the here is a per capita G, 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 GDP. So you can see sort of, uh, you know, we, 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 we have quite a few episodes of uh, uh, price outgrew uh, 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 the, the economy, right? But, but so far, so this suggests there's some relationship, right? With price uh, move too quick, right? To economy eventually come back and so on. But, but so far, it doesn't seem like th this is not exactly China, even though China is so, so much bigger than Singapore, okay? Uh, Nan told me I only have five minutes left, so let me skip a lot of stuff. So, <laughs> so maybe I should get into supply and the talk, uh, get into the government, okay? Before we, uh, eight, minutes. eight minutes, okay? Um, yeah, so so I should, uh, I, I'm gonna skip sort of all the household stuff. So household stuff uh, in China, you know, is. It's uh, not as worrying as sort of uh, we, 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 we had seen sort of in the US uh, in 2006, that's the bottom line. So because in China, uh, the, 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 the bank have done a very good job in demanding very high down payment uh, for these mortgage loans. In that sense, sort of, uh, if we worry about the financial stability of uh, households, actually this is less of a concern. Even if we have a, a, a modest uh, a, a housing market meltdown, it would be fine, right? Okay, even though a uh, uh, price to income ratio is pretty high in China, so so the price to income, I, I, because I had the access to this mortgage loan data, right? We do see when people buy new homes, so how much they pay uh, relative to the income, right? So across different cities, so this price to income ratio for the low end people is about eight. Sometimes in some cities about ten. Okay, so this is uh, indeed very high because in the U.S. we know it's roughly three, right? So, so, so in that sense, sort of this is very high. 
So, so I have a simple explanation. Why would the people pay so much, eight times or ten times of your income uh, for a home, right? So, so it's very difficult to to explain this using sort of a, a simple consumption motive, right? But on the other hand, uh, it's very easy to understand this uh, if you see sort of price uh, uh, growing, sort of uh, you know, uh, ten percent or even uh, in the large city, twenty percent a year, right? So with that kind of growth, so so everyone will buy, right? Because uh, you know, expect that this to continue. <laughs> Right, so 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 this kind of expectation is really driving this, right? So in that sense, you might argue it's a speculative, it's investment, whatever. So so, it, but but this is a very important part of it. Okay, <clears throat> all right. So, so I, I want to uh, uh, get into sort of uh, uh, real estate and the local governments, which I mentioned earlier is about the supply side, right? So this is a very important part, actually, the the, the core uh, of this whole thing. Um, I, I should first mention sort of this uh, uh, physical reform uh, uh, in China in early 90s. Basically, the central government took away most of the tax revenue, right, so from local governments. And instead, uh, uh, leave local government with sort of uh, uh, the, the authority to sell land, okay? So, so <clears throat> nowadays, so this is what happened, okay? So this is uh, local government's expenditure. Local government actually spend, uh, uh, actually is the key spender in China. About 70% of the physical budget uh, was used by local government. But on the other hand, if you look at the sort of uh, the, the, the revenue side, so, so after the, the, uh, the, the, the fiscal reform in 94, uh, local government uh, left with only about 50% of revenue, okay? Spending 70%, but only receiving 50% of fiscal revenue, right? So this big gap, right? So, so the gap was basically funded by land sales, okay? So, so, uh, uh, so, so here, this, this plot here gives a sort of a land sales revenue for different tier cities. This is... Uh, this is tier one, tier three, and tier three. So tier three, you can see, really sold a lot of land. So, so, uh, so each year, in, in some peak years, over uh, almost three trillion uh, uh, revenue from land sales. And uh, this is a fraction uh, contributed by land sales. For some cities, uh, especially second tier cities, about 40% of the uh, 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 revenue coming from uh, uh, land sales. Okay, so 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 this is a sort of a, a, a very important because uh, uh, this shows the importance of uh, uh, real estate to local government, right? Um, a, 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 a big, uh, in some sense, actually, I think this uh, uh, could be a very uh, important, uh, uh, I would actually say this is a, a very creative uh, mechanism design in some sense, right? Because local governments are actually very crucial in local development uh, in China's reform process, right? Basically, they're driving uh, reform, right? Local governments, they they develop local market, develop local institution, develop local infrastructure, and pretty much everything, right? So how do you make sure actually local government doing a good job, right? Forcing them to sell land, actually sell land regularly uh, every year, right? So it's sort of uh, incentive compatible in some sense, right? As economy, we like to say incentive compatible, right? Because in order for them to sell land, they have to, you know, picture, you know, a, 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 a great uh, a vision of how they're going to do with the city, right? Develop this, develop that, have a bridge, have a road and everything, right? So how, how do you make sure they actually do it, right? So after they sell land, they have to come back sell land again every year, right? So they better do it, right? So in a way, sort of, uh, uh, this, this is a a, a very creative design at some point, right, to force in local uh, 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 government, uh, you know, into the market because they have to sell land, so they better do all this, right, they promise to do, right. So, so I think, I think th this is basically what happened, you know, uh, uh, since uh, uh, 90s, right, so, so, um, but of course, at some point, this also can lead to you know excesses, right? So sometimes uh, something too nice can be too nice. Uh, uh, when when you force local government to use so, rely so much on real estate, at the same time, actually, uh, local government can also uh, have a huge influence on local uh, uh, real estate, right? They can you know uh, direct talk to real estate developer to make sure price stay high and all that, right? And later they have to. Uh, in more recent year, we know actually local government actually. Uh, use land as collateral uh, to borrow from banks. So this huge incentive actually even to create a, a boom, right? And actually to 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 
to to do whatever it could to make sure the boom doesn't bust, right? Because so much stake are behind all this. So so this sort of maybe a little bit of unintended consequence. Okay. Right, so so this is about local uh, uh, government financing via uh, platform, which I, I I need to mention. This is also very important in understanding the the the, the rising leverage in China. Um, we know uh, uh, in 2008 when U.S. had the financial crisis, right? Uh, even though China was not hit directly by the crisis, uh, nevertheless, uh, preemptively, uh, Chinese government actually implemented the, the, the massive uh, uh, stimulus in China, right? Actually, a uh, 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 bigger stimulus in China than in the US, right? So that stimulus, uh, uh, roughly speaking, officially 4 trillion RMB stimulus, right? So it was actually uh, uh, mostly funded by local government. Right? So basically, actually, uh, 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 by local government borrowing from banks using land as collateral through these so-called local government financing vehicles. Before 2008, local governments actually were not allowed to use debt. Okay, this is just illegal, right? So, but the, in order to carry out the 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 the, the, the stimulus, actually, uh, central government uh, implicitly uh, granted uh, local government the right to use debt. Okay. So, so that's how sort of all this uh, uh, lately all this leverage pr problem came along. Because before 2008, this was out of question, right? So you have to, uh, everyone has to uh, 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 invest within the budget allocated by central government. But now, uh, 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 once this uh, this uh, this was removed, uh, even after uh, 2011, when the stimulus ended, right? Local government. Uh, realize actually how powerful debt right? leverage could, right? Of course, if you can use debt, uh, you can do a lot of things uh, uh, they could not do before, right? So they cannot stop. So, so, so I, uh, I didn't bring that uh, figure. In fact, you can see, so leverage has been rising. Uh, I had the figure before, but I, I, I didn't bring it here. So, so uh, uh, leverage was rising between 2008 and 2011. And even after the stimulus ended, so leverage continued to rise, okay? And in fact, actually, uh, more precisely, the, the rise, the, 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 the further rise actually mostly through so-called shadow banking because central government told the local government not to do it. But, but nevertheless, they figure out the uh, shadow banking, right? So, so here, uh, China also has a shadow banking problem, but again, in a different form from what the, uh, uh, the, the trouble uh, US had, right? Okay, so uh, here is a plot of uh, uh, debt to GDP ratio across different areas uh, uh, in 2015, according to an uh, audit of the central government, of the local government. So you can see some city actually, so, some areas have really very high leverage ratio, uh, uh, like Guizhou, this is the western uh, province, right? So on, on average, uh, uh, the provinces all had uh, pretty high leverage. And if you look into it, so the most leverage through the so-called local government funding uh, platform, and uh, what the leverage is used for, mostly about city construction, okay? And, uh, and, and, and the where did they get the funding? Mostly bank loans, okay? All right, so uh, have said this, right? So this is uh, why sort of uh, we, 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 you know, knowing that sort of the, the local government was behind the housing boom and the housing and the land uh, was used by local government to, to fund itself and all this, you can kind of see sort of this, this sort of the most important part of the picture, right? So that's why we see the boom. And the, because of this, uh, this is also a key point. Maybe we should worry less about the, you know, potential crash because, uh, you know, if it's just small trouble, uh, the government will fix it, right? It has a lot of incentive to fix it. Unless we, we have this tremendous economic meltdown in, in, the US, uh, in, in China beyond the, 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 the scope of uh, uh, the powerful uh, Chinese government, then we will see sort of a, a housing crash. Does that make sense? <clears throat> All right. So how many minutes do I have? Yeah. Two, okay. All right. So there, there are two more things I want to mention, okay? So maybe a quick picture about how real estate is related to uh, firms in China. So this is a, 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 another part of the, 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 the connection, linking sort of real estate to different parts of the economy firms. So here is a, the figure of uh, investment by public listed firms in China. Okay, so uh, we have uh, 2,000 or some uh, uh, public listed firm in China, right? So 
every year, if we uh, look into so how much these firms invest, so, so this is the average investment by these uh, public listed firms each year. Uh, we can th you, you can see this has been tremendous growth right, over the years. So this firm invested a lot. So if we break down, so what kind of investment they do, okay? So, so the gray bar, so it's just the normal investment. These darker bars are actually interesting. So these are sort of a, a, a land investment. So it turns out actually uh, many of these firms actually uh, bought a lot of land, okay? So, and we know in China we have different kinds of land, right? Commercial land, uh, residential land, and the industrial land. So, so with different zoning, right? So, uh, uh, residential land you can only use to develop uh, residential units, right? And uh, industrial land you can use to build factories, uh, con uh, manufacturing facilities. And commercial land you can only use to build the malls and uh, uh, commercial uh, uh, facilities, right? So. So here, sitting at the bottom, this is uh, the darkest part is industrial land. The, on top of that, the less dark uh, is the commercial land, and the middle here is residential land. So these are sort of a bunch of uh, listed firms. Most of them are actually non-real estate firms. So this is actually, they bought a lot of land. Actually, this is sort of uh, quite interesting. Uh, especially in 2010, 2011, you can see, uh, on average, about one third of the public listed firms actually, their investment is about buying land, okay? And uh, not necessarily just industrial land. Actually, industrial land is the small part of this. Actually, mostly commercial land and the residential land. So, so this just, you know, even actually after that, even now, still it's, it's pretty stable, about 20%, 15-20%. Still quite sizable, right? So, so basically suggests that during this Chinese housing boom, Right, all these uh, uh, non real estate companies are uh, also somehow attracted into speculate, speculating in the in the real estate as well as because they bought a lot of land. Okay, right. So I think it's uh, it's easy to imagine, right? So because uh, uh, real estate price grew so much, uh, this is far more profitable than actually doing anything else. Right. right? Um, okay. So the last picture. Okay, this is the last thing I want to say is about. Uh, um, uh, exposures uh, of banks to real estate, right? So uh, banks are deeply connected to real estate uh, for uh, different loans uh, they made uh, to different parts of the economy related to, 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 to real estate. So, so this part here is uh, uh, lend into, so, so this figure is a figure I took from a, a, a Deutsche Bank uh, a report. So, so here is uh, uh, 18 trillion is uh, uh, loans to individuals, mortgage loans, okay? So middle part here are the uh, lending to property developers, right? So uh, about uh, uh, 14, 15 trillion. And th this part here is uh, 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 loans made to local government to firms with the land or real estate as collateral, another 20 trillion. So if we add this all together, 55 trillion in total, okay, uh, bank loans related to uh, real estate. And this is about 25% of all bank, bank loans. Okay, so this, you can see, uh, uh, banks are deeply connected to real estate. So, so that's why people, I mean, for good reason, they should uh, worry about the real estate because this will eventually affect the financial stability, right? Because banks are gonna suffer tremendously if there's a real estate uh, uh, meltdown, okay? Um, so, so that's all I, I kind of want to say, okay? So real estate market is an in integral part of China's financial system. Right? It has systemic importance, but as I said, uh, despite all this, right? So, so I'm not uh, super worried about the uh, 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 real estate crash uh, uh, yet, right? Because because all of this really, uh, uh, we have a government behind, right? Okay. Thank you, Wei. <clears throat> Welcome far back. But, uh, has systematic importance, you know. That's why we had a 2006 crash, and the effects of that still uh, having today, right? So, even in the let's say 20 percent 
kind of uh, decreasing in value in the Chinese market will have catastrophic uh, impact on the, as you said, it's all interconnected, right? Sure. So um, this is a very good question. So um, yes, uh, housing is also, real estate is also uh, systemic important in the US because uh, uh, exactly for the reason you said. But I want to say there's a very big difference is in what sense where the exposure is, right? In the US, actually, we know uh, 2006, the trouble started with the household, right? Uh, in particular, uh, subprime households, right? So, so a bunch of uh, poor people who should not uh, own house actually managed, for some reason, ended up buying house uh, uh, using a lot of leverage, right? So that eventually uh, uh, caused uh, a big problem in the financial system, right? And eventually spreading uh, to the economy. In China, uh, um, so the exposure comes from entirely different uh, uh, sectors, right? Household actually mostly is fine. Uh, because uh, uh, maybe because uh, uh, of the lesson from the U.S., uh, banks in China really demanded a very high uh, down payment uh, 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 from a uh, household uh, uh, in uh, granting mortgage loans, right? Right, and also had a very high uh, uh, income requirement as well. So make sure this kind of problem doesn't happen. But on the other hand, we have uh, uh, other exposures, right? As I mentioned, uh, local governments. Uh, we had a massive borrowing. Uh, uh, by local governments uh, using land as collateral, right? And uh, I, I think that that's actually the key uh, uh, exposure uh, in China. And because of this very different channel, I think uh, um, how this uh, uh, will go forward will be very different. Right? That's why I kind of think, uh, despite the high leverage uh, in China, um, we, we may or may not see this kind of Western style kind of uh, 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 financial crisis uh, in China because uh, you know everything is sort of uh, you know uh, a bunch of local governments uh, 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 borrow the money from state banks, right? So 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 in the sense that we're not going to see a coordination failure. So so when when the Lehman kind of thing happened, right? So people just run away. They can run because the central government is behind all of that, right? No one can run really, right? So so in the end, there's going to be a, a painful kind of a settlement in some ways, right? It's going to be very painful, and we 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 can potentially Potentially have a huge damage to the system, but on the other hand, uh, um, this m most likely, unless something really uh, beyond my 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 thinking sort of happened, we we w we won't end up in the Lehman kind of situation, right? Um, so this is more of a practical question. Um, you mentioned the tier one uh, cities, the house, uh, the real estate market. Right now, if you were to uh, to give advice to uh, people who want to invest, obviously lots of people won't consider real estate in tier one cities anymore because the price is already so high. But at the same time, if you have like already invested in real estate, but then you you kind of want to sell your like extra extra you know houses or something, but then when you get a big chunk of money, you don't have other like good venues to invest it in. Like stock market is not very stable, and then like in in China economies, you know people can't really mm -hmm. predict it. Then what would you suggest? <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I I I. I I, I, I don't have any suggestion. I mean, uh, it's uh, exactly for the reason you said it's difficult, right? Interest rate is so low, actually. The real interest rate had been zero for, for 20, <laughs> 20 some years, right? So, so unfortunate. That's why the reason ho why housing prices have been so high in some sense, right? Because alternative is so low, right? So people will buy a house anyway, right? So they don't have to live in that. <laughs> so, so, I mean, I mean, stock market has been so lively, but on the other hand, if you look at the average return for the last 25 years in the history of the stock market, it's zero, right? <laughs> you know? So despite all this excitement, uh, we goes up and we <laughs> crash with all that, if you add it all together, it's zero, right? So, so this, unfortunately. Um, so this is, uh, in some sense, this is a part of the national strategy, right? So, you know, keep the interest rate low, so then all the savings goes to <laughs> for investment to support the, the firms to invest, right? So this is the, the strategy, right? So unfortunately for household, especially for savers, so this is a tough, a tough environment, right? 
but but on the other hand, this is sort of the, the blessing of the Chinese economy, right? Savings rate is still so high, right? So 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 this has been a huge blessing uh, to the economy, I have to say. <clears throat> Could you help like explain why the vacancy rate in tier one cities in 2011 picked up, especially when the supply is slowing down, people keep migrating to the tier one cities? Uh, sorry, so why the vacancy rate in tier one cities in 2011. It's so high, it's still high, right? Uh, I think there's uh, quite a bit of hoarding, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so seeing that the prices have been rising so rapidly, especially in tier one city, I showed you some of these uh, uh, applause, right? Beijing so went up more than 10 times in last 15 years. And, uh, you know, if you haven't bought one, you should. I regret because I, I actually spent some time in Beijing in 2008. I thought it was too high. I didn't buy anything. So now, <laughs> right? So, um, right? So, I mean, for, for people who, who, who ever bought, uh, they're very happy. I mean, they can stay <laughs> empty. That's fine, right? And, and you know, sort of, still people are pouring into the city, right? Despite all this concern about air, about everything, about traffic, but still, right? So, so the population still grows. So I mean, right? So the vacancy because they, they don't bother to rent them out. <clears throat> I, if the property tax were to be like um, executed, do you think it would be like very? Um, so you can't speak a little louder. If the property tax were to be executed, do you think it would be a like big problem to the real estate market? So the question is about the uh, property tax, right? Right. So, uh, so here is my thinking. So there has been a lot of uh, discussion about uh, putting pro a property tax on, right? Because I mean, as you can see, in the larger cities, uh, uh, land sales probably going to kind of uh, eventually go a uh, phase out, right? Because uh, there's so much land you can sell, right? So uh, to continue to fund the local governments, um, uh, they need to find a way to 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 <laughs> to, to 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 generate the uh, new new revenue, right? So I think property tax is naturally a next step. But at the same time, I think at the moment politically this is very difficult. Imagine all these people who spend so much to buy those uh, 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 homes at the moment, right? So, so, so they already paid so much, and then suddenly there's a property tax on top of that. This will immediately crash the the the, the, the market, right? So, so which is not uh, uh, anyone in the government want to see either. So I think uh, a natural way to get around, I think, uh, is that you know uh, uh, the, the the homes currently uh, in China, so they they are actually. Uh, 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 Based, uh, based on the so-called uh, leasehold, right, 70 year leasehold, right? So, so at some point the lease will go out, right? Right? So in fact, actually, some homes are actually built on commercial land which have a shorter lease of 40 years. And in some cities, this is already running out. So, so, so then for those homes, uh, there's already sort of, uh, uh, you already seen some examples, like in Shenzhen, which I know, um, uh, Basically, local government basically put the fee, right? After your initial lease ends, so you want to continue, right? Say for another 10 years, you have to pay a fee. And that fee is basically the property tax, right? Huh? So, so the fee is not as high as buying new land, but nevertheless, it's substantial. It's, 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 it's substantial, right? right? So, so that's actually a natural kind of way to, 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 to continue without the causing a big political uh, struggle. Um, you mentioned that um, urbanization goes hand in hand with uh, China's real estate boom. Um, my understanding is the local governments buy lands from uh, rural households, from peasants, and sell them to real estate developers. Mm -hmm. And so the people, households who hold uh, rural hukou, their houses got demolished and their lands got confiscated by the government and they have, they got a, comp they got a compensation and they have to buy uh, apartments from um, the government. That's my, uh, Please correct me if I'm wrong. I, I'm wondering how this real estate boom is affecting China's rural population. I mean, those people whose ho houses got demolished by the government. 
Uh, I don't have a full picture on this. My understanding, actually, for many of them, they're very happy <laughs> when this happened because they, I mean, officially we know land belongs to the state, right? They don't really have the property right over the land anyway. They just happen to use them, right? So, so then, um, in that sense, uh, the state can take it over, right? So there's not really legal protection uh, uh, for the peasants, right? But Usually what happens is that when government uh, uh, took over the land, there's a compensation. The trouble is how do you determine a fair compensation? And, um, and to the extent that the peasant don't have the property rights, right? This leads to sort of vacuum, right? So because what is fair? So it's very hard to justify, right? right? So if you compare that to uh, what the government gonna sell the land for, whatever compensation is too low, right? But on the other hand, compared to what the, the peasants uh, used to kind of, uh, you know, extract from the land is actually very high, right? Because, I mean, uh, uh, the, the output from the land actually for peasants, we know, so the economic output is not that high. So, so in that sense, th this basically sort of, uh, we, we know upper bound and the lower bound, <laughs> where do you settle in the middle? This basically is where the source of dispute, right? We have seen many of these disputes. So, so peasants complain that uh, they, they were not fairly compensated, but on the other hand, uh, the government complained they paid already so much. So, I mean, that, that's where sort of uh, 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 the story never ends, right? So, um, but part of this because of there's no property right there, and there's no way to, to, to really resolve this. Yeah. <clears throat> Any other questions? Well, um, I have my uh, I have a question of my own. Uh, so. Yeah, first of all, thank you for being here. And so, as you you mentioned, um, the Chinese government is selling a lot of land to developers, and by by this, uh, I suppose you mean uh, they're selling um, the property rights uh, with a um, a cap on the amount of uh, on on the land, like um, on the time uh, they can use on this um, specific area of um, the residential land, like. I know, like the Chinese government um, parcel out uh, the residential land uh, in twenty and seventy year leases. Yep. So uh, the first seventy year leases are expected to end in two thousand and thirty. Um, and you also mentioned that uh, in Shenzhen, um, the developers can uh, renew their leases uh, after it expired. Um, so how much of an impact do you think um, the this kind of expiration of the leases? Uh, would be uh, on the uh, housing prices overall. Would it uh, be another boom um, because they have to pay more money to re uh, renew the leases? Mm. I mean, I, I, yes. Uh, I don't think this will lead to another boom per se. Actually, I think actually this will perhaps uh, help to stabilize uh, uh, the market going forward in the sense that uh, now, uh, eventually, we will uh, 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 move into a phase that the local government don't have to rely so heavily on selling land per se, right? They're just going to collect uh, uh, the flow uh, through the renew. Then, you know, there's not huge, so much interest in sort of <laughs> to, to keep boosting the price, right? right? So, so I think actually it can potentially help to, to, to mitigate the incentive. And and uh, and uh, and uh, and maybe the price will, will now finally eventually stabilize, right? So so at the sort of more stable level going forward, that that's kind of my my expectation. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a couple, of just comments, thoughts, and maybe mm -hmm. a, a question right. for you. And towards the end of this, uh, you seem to suggest that uh, the likelihood that we're going to have a real estate crash uh, is low, if mm -hmm. I uh, interpret uh, correctly. Uh, I can see the arguments uh, that you may certainly make sense, and then, you know it's a, it's a you know it does not have the uh, coordination failure issue because of the central government and the various other differences between the U.S. and uh, China real estate system. Now, one thing that I'm wondering, I would like to get your thoughts on, is the efficiency of the system. Mm -hmm. right, so, right. it's one thing that we don't see a big potential crash. Mm -hmm. It's another thing that the allocation mechanism mm -hmm. yes. is not very efficient. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess one way to put it is that there are so many margins that as a centrally planned economy can deploy, so you have a lot of levers, but the question is, well, 
how about the efficiency here? Right. And especially, sort of more forward-looking question is, uh, what do we do going forward? Right. So, you know, the uh, the question about the um, the uh, real estate uh, almost as a phenomena it came out in your talk uh, of asset allocation because there's so few limited investment opportunity sets. Right. Uh, you know, the equity market, as you said, it basically is a zero for over 25 years uh, with a lot of volatility. And then interest rate is zero, real rate. So you have two zeros. And then how do you allocate assets? Now, unlike here in the US, housing is, for most households, is really a, uh, a consumption good. In China, it's at least as much of an investment good than consumption good. So that makes, you know, the two systems very different. So I just would love to get your thoughts on right. one, and your comments and your thoughts on efficiency of the system. Mm -hmm. And second, I mean, in, in the context of real estate. And second, what do you recommend or what are the thoughts sort of for us to move forward? I'll stop here. Right. So the first question is actually, uh, it's a great point. In fact, this is a point I want to make, but I, I, I stopped saying that. Actually, this figure is meant to say that. So, so the location efficiency, right? right. So when, when all the firms, manufacturing firms, and now, uh, now, now real estate firms ended up buying land, right? So, so this is the outcome, right? So, you know, uh, yeah, we are not worried about the necessary about the crash uh, in the housing, but because exactly because if people are not worried about crash, then they end up all buying land, right? right? So they're all pursuing real estate projects. So so this is worrying sort of about the sort of uh, 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 the, the the efficiency of the whole economy, right? Because if everything end up in the real estate, eventually this is uh, this is wrong, right? That's right. <laughs> right. So 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 that's exactly the worry, right? So can we actually uh, uh, see the ten percent? We know it's already down to six some percent, right? So, so even can you keep the six percent growth? It's not easy, right? So, so six percent is what the U.S. or many other countries would dream about. It still, is very very high, right? So, but but can you really continue on that kind of growth when you see if all the firms are actually buying real estate, right? So, so that can happen. So, I think right. at the end of the day, right? So, so exactly the worry uh, 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 in my mind is about the sort of. Uh, 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 how can we continue, right? So, so at some point, when the growth rate down to four percent to two percent, uh, if uh, who knows, if we end up in zero, then that would be a deep trouble, right, right. for everyone. Right. That's right. So, so then that's actually might be a time every, everything will melt down, actually. Right. right. So, so, so that's ultimately the the, the trouble. Right. I mean, another huge. I mean, I think one of my biggest concerns is the intergenerational uh, distributional issue here, mm -hmm. right? So suppose you are a, a top school graduate from Shanghai. Mm -hmm. and without parental support, it's essentially impossible to get any housing, mm -hmm. right? I mean, you have to rent, which is, I guess, one way to go. So this huge overhang issue, mm -hmm. right? And essentially, it's it's, it's almost like a, a, the real estate phenomenon is a, is, a, is an outcome of mm -hmm. wealth distribution mm -hmm. uh, issue. You know, really, it's really the wealth distribution issue in, in China. So mm -hmm. the question is, essentially, with with the forty year old, the fifty year old generation being so rich, so to speak, on average, not everybody, but on average, and then. The next generation mm -hmm. faces a huge challenge. There's a huge overhang problem here. So, but some of them will pass on to the right. next generation right. anyway, right? Right, right. right. So but then the issue for people, uh, immigrants, uh, the migrants from all the exactly. That so would be trouble. Yeah, that's right. So then you have <laughs> even more generational persistence than mm -hmm. you know what people here would worry about mm -hmm. even in this country, right? So mm -hmm. the generational persistence and mobi social mobility will be, mm -hmm. will be a, you know a serious mm -hmm. concern that uh, mm -hmm. would be nice too. Right. So I think to this mitigate, is something for the government to worry. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. So, so, All right. right. Uh, any other questions? We'll take one more. So the government would step in if if P, if the if the growth rate diminishes, people can't pay their mortgages. The even though they're smaller than they were in the U.S., the government would step in and save the banks which are holding these mortgages? So this is the expectation <laughs> of uh, everyone, I would say, in China, right? Whenever something goes wrong, the government has to do something, right? <laughs> so unfortunately, after 30 or 40 years of uh, our reform, the government still, I mean, the uh, central planning is no longer there. But on the other hand, I think sort of a, uh, uh, government is still a central force uh, in the Chinese economy. I think everyone would probably agree. And, 
and uh, and if anything, sort of uh, uh, people will trust. They still think it's the government, right? So I think uh, uh, this is the, in people's expectation, right? Unfortunately, I think actually this might might be good or might be bad, right? So I mean, so the trust issue, people don't still, you know, have certain reservation about whether the market will do the job, right? But still, uh, the government carries tremendous trust. So 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 so, for 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 good or for bad reasons. So yeah. So so. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so we'll see. I mean, whether this will truly work, right? <laughs> okay. Well, let's give a round of applause and uh, let's thank our um, keynote speaker, Professor Wei Shang.